Hey YouTube, this is Itchy. It's um, 3.59 a.m. on Friday, December 2nd. And the last two days uh, we've had some strange lights and things going on over at the Fukushima plant. Um, there was a, a bit of escalation in these light events today with the possibility of a fuel fire. And I've been um, visiting other forums today uh, seeing what other people are, are saying about this and I've heard anything from this being some type of uh, emergency beacon to possibly the venting of hydrogen which we know is a problem right now in, in at least reactor 2, possibly reactor 1 or um, there could have been the disturbance of some radioactive material, possible, possibly fuel rods fell on the ground after the Reactor 3 explosion because last week robots went in to rac Reactor 3 and after um, they were in this area the radiation levels actually jumped three times of what they had been. Um, we don't have any explanation from TEPCO about why this has occurred but it is making uh, work around this reactor and, and on the, the grounds uh, very difficult for the workers uh, be, because of the levels and at a certain point machines don't work either that's why these robots keep going into the reactors and um, they don't come out again um, some of the Geigers aren't even able to measure because the radiation is off scale and there's been occurrences uh, in the past where TEPCO has flown small drone planes over the reactors uh, one of them crashed into the roof of reactor 2 back in May at a certain point machines aren't going to work which makes the situation even more difficult to manage um, earlier in the day and possibly with um, the addition or subtraction of some filters over the camera I apologize for the blurriness. This camera usually is not this blurry. These were some flashes that were going on in the daylight and at times um, it appears that there's also some green flashing. I'll put links to these videos at the bottom so you can look them over for yourself but I was interested in, in what might cause uh, green during a fire and, and I knew copper was one of the elements but what I found out also uh, burns green something called chromium and uh, it just so happens that zirconium cladding which is what comprises the actual fuel rod. Um, it's the, the outside covering of all these little uranium pellets that are inside. Um, it, it is one of the, the alloys that are, are used to make fuel rods. If there is some type of uranium fission going on, it's important to keep in mind that uranium splits into more uranium which splits into more uranium. And the danger there is that this type of chain reaction could infect the spent fuel pools that are on site. And in total, uh, estimations are that there are 600,000 fuel rods. That includes um, all the spent fuel pools and a common spent fuel pool that is in the ground uh, of, of far away from the reactors. So we need to take a look at the jet stream right now and assuming that, of course, you have to assume the worst. If there's a possibility of a fire going on at a nuke plant, yeah, it could be a beacon, you know, it could be some kind of light, but it's, it's really difficult to judge and um, especially without any word from the company that's running the site. Any type of releases are going to be in this jet stream. And I'll run through this in a, in a moment, but I, I first had a look at the storm surge, surge forecast. 
So what's coming out of Japan is actually going to miss Hawaii, but it's really going to hit Alaska, including Anchorage, Juneau, Yukon. Uh, I don't know my west coast of Canada too well, but Vancouver, uh, Alberta, Edmonton, Calgary is in this area. Let's go back to the jet stream for the states. Then I'll scroll, scroll through this slowly. It actually looks like a majority of it is going to be missing the West Coast for a change, um, but it's going to be hitting Idaho, Montana, Utah, Nevada, uh, Wyoming, and then probably by the time it gets here, I'll be posting another video. I wanted to take a look here too at what the um, precipitation is forecasted for uh, this part of Canada and Alaska and this is where the heaviest rain is supposed to be over the next seven days so these areas will need to exercise extreme caution and the NOAA five-day forecast is indicating that the highest rainfall is going to be here I don't think that this jet stream uh, carrying whatever releases from the past one, two days of fires, possible fires, is going to reach this far. Um, and like I said, again, we'll do, we'll do another forecast before it gets to this point. But again, Montana, Wyoming, Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona, got those switched. Texas. We're all going to have to keep on top of this. So that's all I have for right now. Um, I'll be keeping an eye on this. I will post my Facebook page again um, where not only I but, but others are, are now posting updates on here throughout the day. So if you want um, some current information, you can look at this page or any news. And of course, there will be people on YouTube putting out videos as more information comes out. Um, well, that's all we can do and keep spreading the word, let people know, especially they live in, in Canada, um, because I know Canadians are, are getting very little, if any, information. Um, certainly nothing from their government about the, the radiation status there. So if you've got friends in that area, friends on Facebook, um, you know, post this on their, on their page so they can pass it around too. And it's not teenagers and, and young adults that I'm as worried about. I'm more worried about pregnant women and um, babies, small children, um, anyone who has cells dividing, anybody whose immune systems are compromised, um, the elderly and, and sick are going to be uh, more at risk and more susceptible. So those are the people that we really need to watch out for. Stay safe, everyone. I'll update you soon.